Good morning, fish heads. Jen Cravassi, Jekyll Bates. We're back in the shop this morning. Today is Monday, May 18th, 2020, and it is, it's time for me to go fishing. I have been in this shop. I've been in this shop for two and a half, three weeks, pretty much seven days a week. It has been yeah, it's time for <laughs> it's time for me to go fishing. I think I'm going to I'm going to take off tomorrow. It's supposed to be nice, low 70s. It's going to be decent weather. Um I'm I'm needing a fishing mission, so I will not be answering comments or texts or messages or emails. I'm going to try and get all that stuff done this evening after I finish spraying and filming and editing and all that good stuff. Um and I'm noticing I started this video before and then I remembered that there's tons and tons of questions that you guys have been building. It's, I've been trying to answer them. Some of them are easier answered to show you guys than just responding in a, in a sentence or a paragraph. So I think one of the things I want to do later on this week is set aside another Q and a session. So if you guys have any burning questions that you want me to take a look at or answer for you guys on a video, then leave me some comments below and I will set the same uh, deal up on my Instagram and on my Facebook Jekyll Bait Company page. So if you guys have questions and, and or want me to show or demonstrate some stuff, like I'm going to do that with one of these. That's why I left this one um, with, the, uh, with this on it. That's for Sean Renfro. And actually, I think there was another guy, Alan Clark, had asked the same thing. And I've shown this. It's been a while. There's there's a lot of things that maybe if you guys can't find the original video because the, I've been rolling since 2012 and I've been rolling with baits since 2015, I want to say. So five years on that. Um, so yeah, there's probably stuff that's just buried deep in a playlist somewhere that you guys might not be able to get to or remember that I even did. Heck, I've forgotten some of the stuff. I had like to go back and check to make sure I hadn't done a dryer sheet before on the airbrush hacks yesterday. And I'm like, oh, I don't think I did before, but, um, so yeah, that was fun. And I've got some notes on that for today as well. But, um, we're going to start out with this little guy right here. This is that fat Papa replica. And I've got a couple of tools over here with me. And the question from, the, um, it was in the shop on Warts Cross and 3D Eyes from May 15th, a couple of days ago. So the, within the past week, what my process on cleaning out the eyelets and the line tie and all that kind of stuff on these is. And I'm going to try and, uh, I'm going to try and do that this morning. And we're going to start by giving you that demonstration so you can see how I attach drip wires and for for some of you you might want to skip past this if you guys are in the industry or you've been doing this for a long time you probably understand what I'm getting ready to do so if you want to skip to the I don't even know how many minutes it's going to be because I haven't done it yet but we're we're rolling right through but um so there's a this it hangs right so this is the tail drip wire and you can see that bead of KBS at the end of this and that's pretty much just indicative of that's the clear coat running away from the bait which gives you that nice even clean finish there's no muss no fuss but it does have a little bit when you dip a bait now brushing so there's the controversy should I dip or controversy let's see if we can speak in this morning should I dip or should I brush? I dip because I'm doing volume and it's just easier, but you have to deal with the aftermath, which is cleaning out your line ties. So I've loosened this up a little bit. We'll loosen it up a little bit more. These are pretty heavy duty needle nose pliers and I'm just pulling that back gently. I don't want to yank it back and because this has not set up to cure a hundred percent, this takes a couple of days to get rock solid hard. And even then I try and tell my customers to give it about a week. Like don't go out and tournament fish. If you have stuff, you know, my turnaround time is right now. It's like four or five weeks. Um, just because, um, we're getting caught up with stuff. I'm actually going to snip a little bit of this off. And what I've done there is that I've lessened that process 
and it's a lot less likely for this to scratch that clear coat and then I've just kind of removed it just like that so that will still need to be cleaned out you can see there's a little bit there we're just going to drop that off and the same with this drip wire on the tail eyelet and just pull that out now yes there are occasions you guys have asked this question too I've seen it recently you've asked the question where um, paint gets stuck to this sometimes that's because there's excess humidity now humidity is not that offensive to KBS but it is to paint so you have a couple of different things going on there um, if you get a little paint stuck to this especially you know if it's here it's not a big deal if it's here you shouldn't have anything here but if it's back here or if it's on a nose let's see what would be a good demonstration for so like something like this if you get paint stuck here you can do a little patchwork with that um, and then either recoat it again or if you have a black sharpie and you have some darker colors around your your nose right here you can kind of patch that up but we've pulled this off and I use it's just an old standby tried and true I sharpen the blades from time to time but not too much um, and you just it's just elbow grease folks uh, I have seen people dremel this out but pretty much all I'm doing here is just pushing the little tip of the knife through and then pulling this away it's not going buck wild on it and it just takes a couple minutes to clean unfortunately I have not found a foolproof way of keeping the clear coat or epoxy off of that eyelet or off of any of the eyelets if you guys have I would love to know inquiring minds but I have yet to find a way and I've been I've been in the biz for several years now and then the same here just give this a little nudge now the other thing that I like to do because you will have split rings attached to this and see that comes out pretty easy most of the time um, if you start to clean this and it's really gooey that means that you're not set you're you're not cured and set I like to try and if I can if it's possible and I don't have customers saying I really need this like yesterday um, I like to let these clear and hang for a little while uh, a little while could be a day could be two days a lot of it depends on the air conditions and temperature and dew points and all that stuff in the air there's really no magic science to it when it's no longer soft and gooey then you can go ahead and pull it off now KBS does not set up as quickly as UV stuff does I'll tell you that right now and I'm not a UV user um, maybe if I were uh, it would be a life-changing uh, situation for me but this is old habits die hard and this is always been a good friend to me I've never experienced headache and just hardship with this stuff like some of you guys have reported and some of you guys love it some of you guys hate it I'm certainly not opposed to the folks that don't use it um, I just happen to use it I, I, I endorse it because it works for me and it works very well for me and I get a very good finish on these and it doesn't bubble I don't have any problems with stuff skinning over and yes I have before but it's just junk that I've done to create that issue so we're pretty much clean here now we can go ahead and put on our split rings and I would imagine I'm assuming that all of you guys have done that but you know what I did get a question so if you guys want to watch me put on split rings I've even had questions in the last week of where I get my split ring pliers I get these and I love this because this sticks out further than that normally they're the same and I don't care for that at all um, I love having this extra little piece here and this is from Bass Pro Shop I've never seen them in the stores I've only seen them online and they're about eight or nine bucks they're not yes I know um, every just about every, the whole world is made in China folks unfortunately um, hopefully we can change that would love to see 
more stuff happening in the States. But these particular ones, if you want stuff that's not made in China, um, I can recommend a few that are uh, Texas made that tackle warehouse carries. I think one of them have orange handles. But this, it's cheap, it's inexpensive, it's not, it's not cheaply made. I've had this and I have a couple of backups that I've used for quite a while. So um, that's where I get it, Bass Pro online, blue handled. You want to look for this being longer than where your split ring puller is. But if we're looking at split rings, this is the Fat Papa, so I'm not going to put on the small ones. I'm going to add a size, this is a size 4. Um, in most places, it's a size 4. So we're going to add some good split rings. What you guys probably, and I've, I've gone through this recently, there is a, I think the thumbnail for the cover shows uh, one of the catalogs that I use and it's where can I buy that. Um, as far as split rings, if you guys are not incorporated and you're not a legit small business, I go through Barlow's. I know that Dinger Bait sells split rings and probably a few other places. Um, Barlow's seems to have the best bulk deals. You can get a thousand split rings for like 30 bucks. So. Some, some, don't quote me on those prices. Go check it out for yourself. Uh, there's usually um, references to where I shop. Uh, I Personally, I get my split rings from Shorty's. Shorty's is out of Missouri. And they also have fantastic deals. If you're incorporated, you have to show your tax ID number. Um, you have to verify and prove through whatever state you reside in and have a business out of that you have a business license and the whole nine yards so um, and then I'm just and you can just see the process there and I can normally do a <laughs> I can normally do baits in about 30 seconds probably a little bit less but when I teach it's it slows down the process a little bit but that's that is the meat and potatoes of putting on split rings onto a bait folks you just pinch it you'll notice that this part is always down that's just kind of to grip or to pull you have something to pull there and that's it um, easy peasy lemon squeezy uh, you guys are gonna ask about eyes I always get those questions I cut my own so on these this is the um, fish skulls living eyes the fire and for the fat papas, I found that 8.5 millimeter eyes are the best. And I just cut one eye in half. And that's it. This is the calico crappie. That's a three piece that's going out to Daniel Clevenger this morning. If I can get through this video before our post carrier comes. We are back to going through our box. I can go send stuff out to my box and my carrier will get it. Um, again, I'm not going to go over everything that's going on with the tornado and all that stuff. But it has been crazy. So... For those of you that have lived through that with me, apologies, and uh, we're getting better. It's getting better, so hang in there. I don't know how far away we are from getting the post office back, but this is a Dinger. I know I got it on Dinger. I can't remember the exact model number, but it is a mid to deep, to deep dive. This is going to go 8 to 10 for you easily, possibly down to 12, depending on what kind of line you've got on here and if you're trolling it or are you swimming it and popping it back up it will slow rise on you but these are really really good um, you'll notice that the circuit board wake baits are also this body so this is just that deep lip on it super bait really good action in the water um, and again another one of these calico crappies and this on the throat is just a combination of fluorescent red and fluorescent sunburst. Not a fluorescent orange, per se. Just mix some colors. Same with this Little John. One eye cut in half. And it's the same that uh, fish, fish Skulls Living Eyes fire. And this is in a 6 millimeter. Although I probably could have put a 7 on here. Um, but if you notice the Little Johns, the LJMDs that Spro puts out, they've got really tiny eyes on them, which I never understood because their eye sockets are just like this. That's what this is pressed from. You guys are seeing these little knuckleheads. So I got, from time to time when I order bulk overseas, um, I get testers. And I've got a box of them sitting over in the corner. 
that from time to time I kind of bring out and goof around with. And I'm going to throw these. I've got some that are fairly similar. They're a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter weight. So these have got some weight to them. I haven't put them on the scale yet, but I'm going to guess just under a half an ounce which is interesting because let's see how many millimeters this guy is and it's off camera so you're gonna have to trust me on it um, this is from nose to tail not including the eyelets it's 44 millimeters and I'm gonna guess if you guys are not in the States and you want some grams I'm gonna guess 10 or 11 grams on that which is a just under under a half an ounce somewhere between 3 eighths and a half an ounce so it's got some decent weight. Um, I'm excited to see how it works in the water. Uh, just some basic patterns I threw on here and fluorescent red. So this is a Maui blue with some black magenta. The eyes though, these eyes are from John over at Jetson. Um, five millimeter eyes fit this particular one. That's another question I get now that I now that I'm getting into this, I'm going to answer as many as I can. I don't remember who sent what or which questions came from which person. Um, but just off the top of my head, I do remember somebody asking about eyes. You guys are just getting into it and what eyes should I buy, what size. So in the States, there's eyes that you'll see that go like 3 sixteenths and a quarter. So a quarter is probably the closest to six millimeter, and that's a quarter inch. Um, that's that's what I would normally see on six millimeters. Uh, six millimeter, five millimeter are the most commonly used. Something like a something like this. Um, these little S knockoffs. This is actually a six five, and these are also John over at Jetson. I try and feature the custom guys as much as I can. They are artists in their own right. I don't try and pit one against the other. There's two really, really talented men here in the United States. One is John at Jetson. The other is Matt over at Dead Meat Customs. Both of them are phenomenal artists and they're doing some really cool stuff with 3D eyes. Matt recently finished up his autism awareness contest and challenge and donations and it was fantastic. And I have to give a shout out to him because uh, the angling community, the artists and Matt raised over $10,000 for the Abrezes Family Support Services for autistic children and their families. So big, huge round of applause for everybody that participated, everybody that purchased on the silent auctions and the waffles, all of that stuff. And to all of the artists out there, I saw some amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. Um, so Matt, hats off to you, bro. That's just Yeehaw. Go, 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 go. Keep doing what you're doing because you're making waves and that's, uh, we, we need to help the kids out there. Um, especially in times like these. Going back to what we have. This is from yesterday. Um, been holding it for a second here, but this is the holly leaf and the note that I have on this one. Cause yeah, we're going to run long on this probably over 20 minutes. I don't care. It's Monday morning. I need to talk about stuff. Leaves are cool. I know I've seen Capriva do some phenomenal stuff on that. Um, and I kind of had a flashback when I picked that holly leaf off. I'm like, I know I've seen her do stuff like that. Super cool. Um, this I have in my yard. I have a, um, a nuttle oak, which is uh, from Texas. And I have uh, a sugar maple, swamp maple. Sweet. That's a soft, soft wood, not a hard. Um, so these, I would be more inclined to use the oak than I would the maple because the maple leaf is a little bit thinner, but when you're going to use leaves, make sure, and that's why I went after the holly because it's a very thick, very sturdy leaf that's on here. Um, and I did some cutting to get the collar on there and then I just used the point. Um, and I pretty much used the entire thing to do all of the lines, the crawl lines and segments on this bait. You guys saw me do it yesterday. Um, but sturdy leaves, and the reason I say that, unless you're using super low pressure, which you may not always be able to control, um, this is going to just blow all over the place, and I don't think you're going to get clean lines on thin leaves. So that's my little note for that. Um, this was from the shower scrub. 
And uh, I got I always get those funny comments from Archer. He uh, he said his wife is going to be mad when he starts using these. But this is how that turned out off camera after I just did a little bit of accenting in that my favorite uh, detail black magenta. The cool thing about the detail black magenta, if you guys don't see it or use it already as a detail or accent paint, um, it performs a lot like sepia and it's got some glitter in it. Which brings me to my next thought. Um, who was it that said, gosh darn, I'm not going to be able to find it, but the question was basically, um, do I thin out my paints because they're having issues with pearls? Now, pearls are going to be traditionally thicker because they've got that glitter in them. So try, I can't remember your name, I don't remember which uh, subscriber you were, but try shooting a little bit higher. Usually you're not doing detail work with pearls. If you are, I would love to see your work um, if you're just doing like a light, you know, accent. But I would, I would recommend trying to shoot them a little bit harder, uh, 35 to 40 PSI. Um, see where that gets you. Uh, there is some pearl on this. I did some copper pearl and lime pearl on these, and I did not thin. And I normally don't thin. And then the only other accent when I did the hand cut stencil, also off camera, the whole idea was to show you the netting. Um, then I just tricked the bait out. But I can, we can talk about that. I'll use a pen to better define um, these pectoral fins occasionally. And the pen that I'm using is that Uniball Vision Elite. It's always a Uniball Vision Elite. But I'm not going to say always. Occasionally they're Copics and they're more expensive. But this on these right here, and you can see just a little hint of definition. And again, you can just about dip these with the ink still wet and it's not going to run on you. That's one of the reasons that I love using these. Don't attack it straight down. Use your use the roller ball on these pens. Use it at an, at an angle. Next, 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 next. The used dryer sheet. Don't use a new one. Don't because it's got that uh, chemical on it, and that you're going to have a reaction, and your bait's going to smell like Gain or Downy or some whatever dryer sheet brand you know, great value, whatever it is. Um, use them after they've been well worn. And I'll, if I know that I'm going to be doing a bunch of stuff that has dryer sheet like markings in it, um, I'll go ahead and use the same dryer sheet on three or four or five loads of laundry just to get it worn down, get that scent off of it. Um, so just a little additional quick tip for that. And this is what that bait looked like. And I can show you a little bit better now that we have the clear on there. This is that hot tuna, that classic hot tuna pattern that I've been doing for years. And again, I, I don't make any claims that I'm the first person that's done stuff like this. I really am not. Uh, more often than not, people have been spraying baits for generations and ever since there have been plastic baits. People have been experimenting. The biggest thing that I try to impress upon you guys is to think out of the box and come up with your own patterns. Um, and the other thing is, if you have seen somebody do something very similar, like the, like with these little white dots, um, I see a lot of folks do those, but there's tons of us that are using those creature feature stencils, and you can only do whatever the stencil dictates that you can do, so they're going to come out similarly. Um, so there's a lot of people that, you know, obviously don't do a, a direct knockoff in the exact pattern. If you can, just don't do it. Don't do that. Um, these eyes are from John over at Jetson. He's got some kick-ass eyes, folks. They're really awesome. And then this is that traditional fluorescent spray. It's a white primer with random splotches of different fluorescent colors. I've got purple, yellow, orange, and fluorescent red on this. Uh, a little bit of purple bled into the yellow, so it will you'll get that green or that different this but this is there's no blue and there's no green in this. It's just purple um, that I sprayed down and it blended in all by itself because that's called wet on wet. It's when one paint hasn't been heat set and you put put another color on top of it. you try and get colors that complement one another so. Trying to give you as many lessons as I can since I'm taking tomorrow off, and that way you guys can have the entire day 
to just go crazy and experiment. This one's going out to Ben Garrison. This is the Arctic Crappie, and it's on that holo uh, holographic reflective foil. This is out of Dinger. It's on a 1.5. These little dudes are cool. This is a fish catcher. I know that you said you might want to shelf this, Ben, but I hope that you get some use out of it. Uh, and again, 5mm dragon eyes, reptile eyes from uh, Jetson. I almost said the other one, but it's not. Everything on these S's and most of this is from John today. Um, Matt usually features big, he's big game baits. So I don't think that he does anything under eight millimeters. Matt, please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. And I apologize. This is the last but not least for the day. And this is that produce bag. And this came off some cuties oranges. I've been eating oranges like a fiend lately, especially with the COVID stuff going on out there, making sure that I eat as many good foods as I can. Not to say that I'm not going after French fries at Wendy's on occasion. Yes, I do. Um, but this is, and it's just this, this particular kind of produce bag. I really like, I like the onion ones too. They're kind of plain. They kind of end up looking like, um, like these shower scrunchies, most of these. Now, I do like the garlic. Like, if you get fresh garlic uh, at the supermarket, in the produce section, it's a much thinner mesh. So I like those as well. But this uh, almost replicates barbed wire. And when you pull it tight, man, it gives off the absolute coolest, coolest, coolest pattern. Um, I know I've seen grout do this. Uh, I know that I've seen before him and after him, but the, the bait that made the most impression on me when I saw it was Chris Grout's version of something very similar to this. So shout out to him. I've been peeping his stuff lately. He's looking, looks like Chris is going to be doing some stuff with Guggen. Um, and Guggen, if you get, everybody knows the name by now, but um, big stuff happening. So good for you, Chris. You've worked hard. You've been working at it way way longer than than a lot of us have so if you don't know chris grout's work he's bubonic go check him out on facebook go check him out on instagram check him out check him out and go buy his stuff because he does it for a living just like i do it for a living just like a few of us do it for a living support your local businesses support and and i'll tell you what whether you love them or hate them on youtube they have built their business at guggen squad from the ground up they were kids when they started they started back in the late 2010s when YouTube was just a pioneer company um, they just started making stuff for themselves mostly and that's, that's one of the biggest reasons that I started making just to document stuff for family and it has grown into um, a, a little bit of, of, uh, of money for me not a lot uh, I get more stuff uh, off of ad revenues from uh, from Amazon than I do, but this, this is, it helps me replenish supplies so I can continue to bring you informative videos, fishing videos, spray sessions, and the like, so um, I, I am grateful for YouTube and grateful for Amazon and grateful for all you fish heads out there in Fish Head Nation. That is all the news that's fit to print today. I have gone way, way over a shop update, but I've got some good stuff. Think of those questions. Think about stuff that you want to talk about or have me answer and I will maybe we'll do a spray session Q&A where I'm just answering questions and spraying it out. Um, that's something that I haven't done. It's a different take on the spray session. So you guys have a fantastic day as always. It's good to see your faces here. Have a great week. Hang in there. I hope you can get out and go fishing. I hope that uh, you guys spray some really killer stuff and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.